Stuart Farrer practice witchcraft, and tonight they are open to question. Yes. If you have all these special powers, why then do you need a martial arts expert as a bodyguard? For surely forewarned is forearmed. <coughs> we live in a real practical world. And by living in that real practical world, we have to face the fact that out there can be a very dangerous place sometimes. Because of the fact that, for example, I'm a known witch, I often have to go into places where and I hope I'm not going to offend anybody in the audience. For example, there may be some fundamentalists or born-again Christians. I know of at least one Christian organization in England who are so militant that they have actually stooped to violence. Watch out for those weirdos. <laughs> we are the weirdos, mister. Hello, my friends. I like to mention this every so often. Not all Christians are hateful bigots who want to demonize pagans. Most are decent people who live their lives in accordance with their beliefs. My channel is to expose those people who lie about pagans and spread bad information about our beliefs and our practices. I found this man's vitriol disturbing at first, and then I began to feel sorry for him. I have often found that the most bigoted and hateful people in this world are fearful and ignorant of those they do not understand. So with that disclaimer out of the way, let's bounce between time periods and cultures as we learn the truth about Halloween. I hope you enjoy. Okay, welcome back. I'm Robert Breaker, and this week's sermon is going to be on the subject of Halloween. Well, hello there, Robert Breaker. I'm really looking forward to your sermon on the Catholic celebration that has become the secular American holiday of Halloween. There is so much bad information out there spread by the likes of Bill Schnobelin, David Carrico, Bob Larson, and, of course, Alex Sandy Hook Jones. <laughs> holiday is actually Holy Day. Yep, Halloween is a holy day. Well, the holy evening before All Saints Day. So far, I'm with you, Robert. Now, when you think about Halloween, what is the first thing that thought that pops into your mind? What is your first thought? Kids dressing up in costumes, going around the neighborhood, getting candy? The laughter of children as they scare one another or play pranks? When people mention Halloween, why, usually people think of ghosts and witches and hobgoblins and black cats and fairies and demons or devils, werewolves, vampires, zombies. I mean, that's the kind of thing that comes to your mind when you think of Halloween. No. The first thing that comes to my mind is kids in costumes collecting candy. But I guess those costumes could be witches, zombies, vampires, or they could be Spider-Man, Iron Man, Batman, or Miss Marvel. Halloween actually comes from Hollow Eve or even. Sometimes it's put forth as Hollow Eve. And what Halloween is, it's called All Hollows Eve, and it's the day before All Saints Day, which is November 1st. Now, what is it? It's basically a festival or a day set apart to remember the dead. So what is Halloween? It's the Holy Dead Day. <laughs> it's the Holy Day to the dead, basically. To remember the dead. That's what Halloween is about. All about remember dead 
people. Now that's odd. Remember the dead? Honor the dead or pray for the dead? I'm not familiar with the actual Catholic celebration of All Souls Day from Britannica Online. All Souls Day in Roman Catholicism, a day of commemoration of all the faithful departed, those baptized Christians who are believed to be in purgatory because they died with the guilt of lesser sins on their souls. It is observed on November 2nd. Roman Catholic doctrine holds that the prayers of the faithful on earth will help cleanse these souls in order to fit them for the vision of God in heaven. And the day is dedicated to prayer and remembrance. Requiem masses are commonly held, and many people visit and sometimes decorate the graves of loved ones. From antiquity, certain days were devoted to intercession for particular groups of the dead. The institution of a day for a general intercession on November 2nd is due to Odillo, an abbot of Cluny who died in 1048. The date, which became practically universal before the end of the 13th century, was chosen to follow All Saints Day. Having celebrated the feast of all the members of the church who are believed to be in heaven, the church on earth turns on the next day to commemorate those souls believed to be suffering in purgatory. Deuteronomy chapter 14, here's an odd verse. I don't understand it exactly, but... Oh, you don't quite understand it. Well, please explain it to us and how those Catholics are celebrating their faith all wrong. It, it gives the idea that you're not supposed to do certain things in remembrance for the dead. In Deuteronomy 14, verses 1 and 2, the Bible says, Ye are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. I didn't read anything about Catholics cutting their flesh or placing markings upon their bodies or making a bald spot between their eyes for the dead. But yet, what is Halloween? Halloween is a day that's set aside to remember the dead. The dead. Thou shalt not remember the dead. Your Bible reads not to cut or mark one's self in remembrance of the dead. Those verses read nothing about not honoring or remembering the dead. So you are placing more restrictions than even what the Bible reads. Robert, so far I am disappointed in this sermon. But many times in which we find the word hallow in the Old Testament, it applies to the Sabbath day. So God has a day set aside as a holy day. But what we're going to find through this study is that the devil has set aside a day for him, which he calls his holy day. Where in the world did you find an actual quote from the devil claiming that the all-holy evening before All Saints Day was his day? This is said by other Christians to demonize Catholics. It has no basis in historical fact or reality. Much like your Bible, it is not real. So far, we're getting off on the wrong foot. <laughs> You're telling me. This ain't even the right road. Because so far, Halloween is a day for remembering the dead. And God says, don't remember the dead. No, that is how you interpret those verses. The Catholic celebration of All Hallows' Eve, All Saints' Day, nor All Souls' Day involve marking, cutting, or making a bald spot between one's eyes. I love it how religious zealots will completely ignore certain verses like cutting one's hairs or mixing linens, and then reinterpret others to fit a bigoted agenda. The hypocrisy is blatantly obvious. And I've been studying about Halloween, trying to find out where does it come from? What's it all about? Who, who started this? And what I found is that it is thought that Halloween was originated from the Celtic Harvest Festival. So it's the Celts, the Celtic people. So it is a Celtic Harvest Festival. No, Samhain did not morph into Halloween. Scholars believe that around 844 CE, Pope Gregory IV moved the Feast of Martyrs' Day from May 13th to November 1st to possibly compete and supplant the pre-Christian celebrations of Samhain. The evening before All Saints' Day became known as All Hallows' Eve. The honoring of all Christian martyrs of the faith was originally celebrated on May 13th, the date established by the 4th century. Pope Boniface IV in 615 established it as the Feast of All Martyrs, commemorating the dedication of the Pantheon 
an ancient Roman temple into a Christian church dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the martyrs. By 741, the feast included not only martyrs, but all the saints in heaven as well, with the title changing to Feast of All Saints by 840. In 844, Pope Gregory IV transferred the feast to November 1st, timing it around the harvest to be able to provide food for the pilgrims. Some scholars believe this was to substitute a feast for the pagan celebrations during that time of year. Pope Sixtus IV in 1484 established November 1st as a holy day of obligation and gave it both a vigil, known today as All Hallows' Eve or Halloween, and an eight-day period of octave to celebrate the feast. The Celtic people had nothing to do with the creation of All Hallows' Eve. Now, if you know anything about the Celts, the Celts their religious leaders were called Druids, their priests. I'm not sure the Druids were still around in 844 CE. The Romans oppressed the Druids in 100 CE, and Tiberius banned Druidism around the 2nd century CE. Oh, were the Druid priests evil. The Druid priest would, would practice witchcraft, basically. They had familiar spirits. They would talk to the dead. They would use demons to cast spells and things like that. Uh, we don't know exactly what the Druids believed or how they worshipped. We have some historical records that are questionable, and we have mythology and archaeological evidence of how they buried their dead and some of their temples. I'm going to need to see a citation of where you are getting this from, and I'm going to assume this is your interpretation of what the Druids practiced practiced and believed. Not sure what research you did, but I would guess you got this info from highly biased and questionable sources. So this Halloween originated from the Celtic Harvest Festival, which is October 31st to November 1st. Nope. You are confusing time periods. The Druids were pretty much wiped out in the 2nd century CE. Halloween did not exist before 840 CE. You have a huge 700 year gap between these cultures. What it is, it is halfway through the autumn and winter solstice. So between the autumn and winter solstice, they have this festival, this feast, this day they set aside as holy. Only they set it aside as holy to their God, not to the true God, Jesus Christ. You're a little confused. Samhain falls between the autumn equinox and the December solstice. It was the end of summer and the beginning of winter in the northern hemisphere. So they set this aside to their God. Now, what did they do? They named this festival, or this time, Samhain. You mean Samhain. So this time of Halloween is known as Samhain. Now, the pronunciation is different uh, from what I found on the internet. They pronounce that Soin. I don't know how you get Samhain as Soin. Well, because the word Samhain is from Irish Gaelic and not English. But supposedly these, these Celtics lived in Ireland, Scotland, and the Isle of Men, and this was their religion. And they celebrated Samhain October 31st, to November 1st. That's the same date as Halloween. Halloween is always October 31st. So Halloween, October 31st, comes from Samhain, which was a pagan festival. I want you to remember that. It's all about the pagans. We that are Christians should have nothing to do with pagans. You mean the pre-Christian cultic cultures. There was no pagan land, no pagan language, and absolutely no pagan religion. Christians called non-Christians pagans. During the first century CE, the various European cultures had their own gods and goddesses and their festivals and celebrations. The cult of Christ had not been assimilated into these cultures yet, and did not until around 380 CE when Christianity became the official Roman religion. But this whole festival began with paganism from the pagans that worship false gods. I'm assuming you are still talking about the pre-Christian Celtic cultures, but you are using the term pagan, which is ineffective language when you are trying to talk specifics. Samhain or Soin or however you want to pronounce this word. I'm just going to call it Samhain as it looks like it is supposed to be pronounced. Well, you could do a Google search and learn how to pronounce it, but I shouldn't be one to judge as I constantly mispronounce words. Was part of this pagan Celtic harvest festival. During Samhain, the Druid priests 
worshipped what they call, ah, uh, and I don't even know how to pronounce this. I notice that E A C or I'm just going to pronounce it the way it looks. The O S C, the O S C is how they spelled it. A O S and then S I, O C, whatever that is. The A S C. As to how the ancient Irish around the time of the Druids viewed these fairy folk, or if they even recognized them, I have no idea. Later Irish folk tales mentioning setting out butter, milk, honey, even whiskey as offerings to the fairy folk. As for the ancient Irish worshipping them, I have no idea where you are getting this. What that is, is what they worship. They're pagan deities, they're pagan gods. They believed they were fairies or spirits. Now, what are spirits? Disemboweled spirits in the Bible are devils or demons. During this time period of October 31st to November 1st, what these Druidic priests, many of which were witches, did, these pagans... The Druids did not call themselves witches. The word witch comes from an Anglo-Saxon word. Is They did sacrifice and food and drink offerings to their false gods in order to propitiate their false gods. So this was the time of the year, the harvest festival, in, if you will, in which they came together and they offered sacrifice to devils, to evil, wicked spirits. They very well may have made sacrifices to their gods, Samhain. However, great feasts were also had to build alliances, to thin out the livestock that would not survive a harsh winter, and to possibly smoke or salt meat to preserve it. Feasting, drinking, and storytelling are recorded as taking place during this time. But these Druidic priests believe that during October 31st in the evening, the spirits of the dead could cross over to the earth and bring bad luck and chaos. And so what they taught the people to do was to give offerings in order to placate, or the term they use is propitiate, propitiate means the act of appeasing wrath, uh, to get rid of the wrath of these spirits so that the spirits wouldn't be angry with them, which is basically what paganism is, false gods offering sacrifice to the false gods in order to have a great harvest next year. The Druids very well may have made sacrifices to or for the dead around Samhain. We don't know for certain. We can go by mythology, historical records, and archaeology, for example, to assemble a picture of what the Druids actually believed and or practiced. But without direct sources, we can only theorize. And you are getting the false gods wrong. All gods with a Big G of the Celtic tribes are the true gods, and your god, with a little g, is the false one. So that's what they believe. They also believe the souls of the dead could visit their houses during this time. We don't know with absolute certainty how the Druids viewed the dead. It was written by both Julius Caesar and Diodorus Siculus that the Druids believed in the transmigration of the soul, or if they, at the time of the Druids, accepted the concept of a thinning veil or a spirit world. We just don't have first-hand writings of their beliefs. And that they would go house to house during this time. That sound like what they do in Halloween today, trick or treat, house to house. What this did was this led to several customs or practices that they did during this time, including gambling and revelry, scrying, scribing, scribing. I, I, I don't know if I said that word right, scribing, I think. It's, it's looking into something to try to tell the future, fortune telling, etc. I would really like to know where you got this information from because it is wrong. It's like beyond wrong, wrong. Actually, it sounds like you got all this information from a chick track. Jack Chick got all his bad information from our old friend, you guessed it, Mr. I was a vampire BS himself. I chose to become a vampire because it seemed, you know, sexier somehow. <laughs> and uh, so uh, anyhow, I went through about a year and a half where basically I lived on nothing but human blood and Catholic communion wafers. That's all I ate. The Druids did not go from house to house demanding Snickers bars in their pillowcases. This is fabricated nonsense with nothing to back it up. During the time of the Druids, we do not know how they viewed an afterlife or if they believed in spirits. We can speculate based on later mythology that they did believe in a spirit or a fairy world, but whether they believe they came into their houses, again, this would be speculation based off later mythology and folklore sources. During the time period of the Druids, around 100 CE, they may have gambled. Definitely they reveled, and they probably practiced some form of divination. But we have no record, so we don't know for certain what 
they did during Samhain. We can deduce that they may have believed or how they celebrated, but we have no direct sources. And there were all these different customs that they had during this feast of Samhain. Now, let me just give you some of the customs. And let's see what you think this sounds like. Because what you find is that what men are doing today is the exact same thing that they did back then. If, if we that are Christians would not go back in time and celebrate their pagan customs, why would we as Christians celebrate their pagan customs today? Pagan customs. So you're speaking about Samhain and not Halloween, which is a Christian, or more specifically, Catholic holiday. I don't think the Druids back in 100 CE would have trusted such a foreigner as you with your modern clothing and funny speech, but they might cut you some slack for that epic beard. You could filter so much beer through that mesh. And yet, the same exact things that these Druidic people did, people are doing today. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand how Christians celebrate this. But here's an example. I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, maybe five different examples of things that were celebrated by the Druids. Remember, Druids were wicked! Wicked! W w w wicked! The Druids were the priests of, of the Celts who sacrificed human beings to false gods. I mean, it's just bullshit. The Celts were warring tribes. Some tribes engaged in headhunting for trophies, and they often fought in single combat. Prisoners of war may have been offered or ritually killed, as well as those committing high crimes may have suffered death as punishment. As to records of actual human sacrifice, we have very little evidence. Log bodies have been found which indicate some form of ritual killing, for example, from the life and death of a druid prince by Anne Ross and Don Robbins. But were they high-profile prisoners of war? Were they criminals being punished for transgressions? Or were they ritual sacrifices for some sort of tribute or offering to a triad of gods? We don't know. Who used demons and witchcraft to do their will. They were the witches of their day. Is that good? No. But one of the things that they did was apple bobbing. Now, have you ever heard of apple bobbing? And you stick your head with your hands behind your, your back and stick your head in there and try to bite an apple and pull it out. I never knew where that custom came from. I never thought anything about it. Little did I know I was celebrating a custom that a pagan feast was set up and they did on that feast and it was part of the worship of evil spirits. Now, I'll never do that. Knowing where it comes from? No thanks. No thanks. I don't want to celebrate the pagan deities the way they used to celebrate their pagan deities. Apple bobbing wasn't even associated with the All Holy Evening before All Saints Day until much later. I couldn't find an exact date of when apple bobbing began, but it was originally a European courtship game. Bobbing for apples originated in Europe hundreds of years ago. Then it had to do with romance of all things. You see, the game was part of a courting ritual and was a popular way to bring young lovers together and help them determine if they were soulmates or not. One of the most popular ways it was played was for each apple in the container to represent a special someone. Each girl would then bob for an apple and try to bite into the one that belonged to her crush. If she was able to successfully get it on her first try, that meant that the stars were aligned and they were destined to be together. However, if it took the woman two attempts to get the apple, that was an indication that they would court for a while, but their relationship would eventually fade. It wasn't meant for the long haul. And if it took her three or more shots, to bite into her crush's apple, it sadly meant that her crush wasn't the right person for her and she shouldn't try to pursue a relationship with him. Another common theme for the game, whoever successfully bit into an apple first would be the first person in their group of friends to get married. Sometimes girls would even follow another, it says superstition, but I'm pretty sure they meant superstition, surrounding the game which claimed that if they put the apple they bit under their pillow at night, they would see who their true love was in a dream. So bombing for apples has zero connection with the Druids of the first century CE and zero connection to the Catholic celebration of the All Holy Evening before All Saints Day. So you can take that off the list. So apple bobbing was one of them. Another one was a bonfire. They would have this huge bonfire. Now, you know, it's not a sin for a bunch of people to get around at night around a fire. 
Of course not. How else would Pastor Greg Locke burn all those Harry Potter books if not with a bonfire? Ah, burning books. Nothing screams 1930s National Socialist German Workers' Party as much as a good old-fashioned book burning. I love the smell of burnt suppression of thought in the morning. Uh, I've been to Christian meetings where we'd go out to a house of a Christian and a bunch of other Christians were inviting, uh, invited to go and we'd have a big old fire. We'd all sit around and sing hymns. And as you burn the books of heretics, we get it. It's a hobby. Maybe just not burn books. Maybe instead hold a book drive and donate to your local library. And here's the problem. The bonfire. What is a bonfire? Well, they would light a bonfire in order to keep the dead away. They were terrified that the dead would come, so they'd have to do certain things to try to keep the dead from visiting them. So big, huge bonfires were to keep the dead away. I know this is all bullshit. My viewers know this is all bullshit. And I'm assuming to some degree you understand this is bullshit. Large bonfires were known to mark certain times of the year. However, the term bonfire comes from the 15th century. You know, during the time when people were accused of practicing witchcraft and were hung in the gallows or burned alive at the stake, well, these bone fires were quite large. Would you like to spin the wheel of nonsense a second time? Bob. Now, what does the Bible say about bonfires? Well, if you know your Bible, these pagan bonfires were used oftentimes for sacrifice. Let me go through some verses in the Bible. Something that the pagans would do, go to Leviticus chapter 18, is the pagans would sacrifice in several different ways to their false gods. So now bonfires are pagan? Leviticus 18.21 mentions Molech, which was a Canaanite deity in the Bible. Palestine, which was part of ancient Canaan, was about 1,800 years before for the Druids, and about 2,300 miles away from England. I understand you lump all pre-Christian cultures as pagan into one group. Are you speaking of the Canaanites or the Druids? Which pagan culture? And please, in the future, cite your sources. It's really not that difficult. On a side note, Leviticus 18.6-19 through 19 is all about nakedness. I did not know there was so much nudity in the Bible. One way was through a blood sacrifice where they would literally, you know, stab someone and offer up the blood. But another way is they would literally sacrifice children. Don't bullshit me. Nope, absolutely not. There is zero evidence that the Druids sacrificed their own children to their false god by throwing a baby, a little baby, into a fire and watching him roast and burn. Uh, everything that guy just says bullshit. Thank you. That is disgusting, and there is no evidence, not even second-hand or third-hand accounts, that the Druids sacrificed their own children. I suggest you put down the chick tract and pick up an actual history book. Anne Ross would be a good start, as well as Peter Beresford Ellis, the Druids. Sure, there is a lot of 17th century romanticizing you know, of the Druids, but there is just as much nonsense painting them as babies sacrificing satanic cannibals. They fall somewhere in between, obscured by fiction and fear. I cannot fathom the sick and demented mind of a person that would take a newborn child, a beautiful baby, or not even newborn, two, three, four, five, six months old, and just throw it into a fire and watch it burn. That is a sick, 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 perverted person. Yep, it is very shocking and abhorrent, but the facts and evidence that such infanticide was committed by druids is non-existent. And what's even worse is that person doing that thinking they're doing a good thing, thinking, oh, now we've appeased the gods and we'll all be happy, while you murdered that poor, poor child. Wicked! W w w wicked! This straw man is almost larger than Caesar's wicker man. Those horrible druids which I claim did something that there is no factual evidence for. God says, do not let any of thy seed pass through the fire. So one of the things they would do is they would throw a child into the fire and let it burn. Another thing they would do is they'd all have this game where they play jump through the fire. And you know, all throughout paganism, there was always two ways to baptize someone. You baptize them in fire, or you baptize them in water. And there were certain festivals which they would go and they'd jump through the fire, 
And that was a way that they were saying, hey, we've, we've passed through, we've been baptized to our false god. Witch pagans. You are confusing later Beltane folklore, where the early Irish passed their cattle between two fires to ward off bad luck. They also jumped over pit fires. It was thought to burn away the bad luck of the previous winter, and there is no evidence that druids practiced baptism. And if they did, if they believed it had to be either through fire or water. And be 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 going around a, ba- ba- uh, a bonfire worshiping who? Baal. Baal here is connected with Moloch. And one thing for sure we know is these Druidic priests, they were all the priests of Baal. No, they were not priests of Baal. Baal, also also given as Baal, is a Canaanite Phoenician god of fertility and weather, specifically rainstorms. The name was also used as a title, however, meaning lord, and was applied to a number of different deities throughout the ancient Near East. Baal is best known today from the Bible as the antagonist of the Israelites' cult of Yahweh. Tales concerning Baal date back to the mid-14th and late 13th centuries BCE in written form, but are understood to be much older, preserved by oral tradition until committed to writing. There are no records of Druids referring to Baal. There are no statues of Baal found in archaeology sites associated with the Druids. We have statues of many gods and goddesses of the Celts, they were polytheists, but no ball. Your sources are really bad. They are fabricating history. Does Exodus 2016 still apply if you knowingly spread false information? Hmm, I should ask Brother Matthew about that. To pass children through the fire, like a bonfire, is connected with witchcraft, and witchcraft is connected to all these other things that we're looking at right here. You are building off unverified assumptions and you are mistakenly associating them with witchcraft. Witchcraft is connected to wizards and familiar spirits. Familiar spirits. What is a familiar spirit? A familiar spirit is a demon or a devil. This has got to be the largest straw man argument ever produced. You've completely built the Druids into something they weren't, and then you project your interpretation of Bible verses onto them. So what witchcraft is, a lot of people, I guess, don't understand, and that's a good thing. If you're a Christian, it's great that you don't know what witchcraft is. Um, I actually got a book from the 15, 1600s by King James. You know, we use a King James Bible. Well, King James was a pretty studious fellow. If by studious, you mean he was incredibly paranoid and delusional, then sure, he was. He actually wrote a book on demonology. And I, I said, man, I wonder what that's about. So I got the book, and it was all about him condemning witchcraft and how evil it is what witchcraft is. And in that book, he explained what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is a person speaking with devils or demons and asking them to do them a favor. And so if you become a witch, you literally are talking to devils. And that's what witchcraft is. It's binding demons through words to do your will. But you better be careful. You have to pay them back. Witchcraft is evil and wicked. Wicked! Wicked! And I want nothing to do with it, but that's what it is. That's what witchcraft is? I've been doing it all wrong all these years? Why didn't somebody tell me about this? You must have an endless supply of straw. And I like how you fill in the gaps of straw with a large heap of bullshit. King James was a paranoid and delusional tyrant. He saw witches everywhere. He believed that unseen forces were working against him. So it's an abomination, these things that they're doing. God says, I do not like them worshiping another god and calling him holy. Remember, holy day, Halloween, holy evening is what it's called. And it's a set up as a pagan festival to worship demonic spirits. It is not a godly festival. Wicked! W- 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 wicked! The Holy Evening Before All Saints Day, the Catholic celebration is most definitely Christian. Regardless of the gold medal worthy mental gymnastics you are performing on these poorly built straw men held together with bullshit. There is no evidence that druids passed through the fires or made sacrifices to fire. And the other huge straw man made of wicker that Julius Caesar claims the Gauls built and filled with livestock and human beings, then set ablaze was most likely propaganda. It was the time in which they came together for divination concerning marriage, luck, health, death, etc. So all the people would come to these Druidic priests on this day, the holy day. Remember, they call it Halloween, holy even. 
So all the people would come together and say to the priest, Hey, priest, you know, uh, we want to know the future, and we know this is the day that we can find out. Of all the days, this is the day that they're more inclined to speak to us. So, hey, here's an offering. Here's a sacrifice. Talk to us. Tell us what our future is. The concept of linear times just escapes you, doesn't it? You are speaking of Halloween traditions. Many folk practices have been included in Halloween celebrations. How or why Druids would have practiced divination on Samhain would be speculation. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times. Well, what is Halloween? It's observing one day above all days. So let's see how strictly you hold yourself to these expectations. Do you own a watch? Got any calendars in your home or office? Any clocks hanging in your kitchen? Does your phone have a calendar function? All of these are observing time. There shall not be found among you anyone that marketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Since you take the Bible so literal, you, my sinning friend, are going to hell for being an observer of times. Oh, but I am sure you have a but, or some other excuse to not follow this verse as it has been written. Like all the other Bible verses you cherry pick to suit your bigoted agenda. During this time of All Hallows Eve, during this pagan day of wickedness, WICKED! W w w WICKED! That they, they said was holy to their false god. My God, man, how much straw do you have? You are taking the name of All Hallows' Eve, which is the all-holy evening for All Saints' Day, which has been celebrated by the Roman Catholic Church since 844 CE, and claiming it is the Druid celebration of Samhain, which was 700 years prior, and we do not know exactly how the Druids observed this celebration. Many folk practices have been included in Halloween traditions, but we do not know if they have direct connections to the ancient Druids. They would practice what they call guising or mumming. That's what guising is. Guising is dressing up, dressing oneself up in a disguise, in a costume. Or mumming. Now what is mumming? I had to look for a while to figure out what this word meant. Mumming means wearing a mask and or putting on a play or a skit while you're dressed in this mask. Uh, they believe that dressing up like a spirit or impersonating that spirit was how they protected themselves from that spirit. Although the Celts wore animal skins, or may have worn masks, we have no evidence that they did it specifically for or on Samhain. Dressing up in costumes around All Saints Day did not become commonplace until about the 15th century. Well, what do they do nowadays in Halloween? They dress up in costumes. Yes, they do. Why do you Christian extremists always want to take the fun out and turn everything into a Bible study? And they don't even think that this is a pagan holiday that is a holy day to Lucifer, and that dressing up is a part of the pagan feast, and you dressed up in order to keep demons away from you. Whew, weird. I'm not going to dissect your straw man for the gazillionth time, but Samhain and Halloween fall around the same time, but they are separate celebrations. One is Roman Catholic, and the other is based on pre-Christian Celtic societies. Guess which is which, Robert? Robert? Satanists love to wear disguises. If you look at the Illuminati, if you look at the Satanist groups, they love to pretend to wear masks. They love to put on masks and black robes, and they love to pretend to be someone they're not. They love to disguise themselves. Eyes Wide Shut was not a documentary, and Stanley Kubrick did not fake the moon landing. You conspiracy-guzzling idiots are so gullible that you believe everything but the objective truth. The Illuminati existed in the 18th century, and to the best of my knowledge, they did not wear masks. Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. You know, that's how kids go around every year, walking around, going to your house. Is that a smile I detected there? For a brief moment, I saw you as a happy, warm-hearted individual. Come on, give us another smile. Don't you see the joy this holiday brings to children of all ages? What is trick or treat? Where does it come from? And there goes the smile. Well, trick or treat is something they did. Remember earlier I mentioned that they believed, these Druids, that these dead spirits would come door to door? So the Druids would also come door to door, and they would claim, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get rid of the spirits for you. 
And they would come to your door and they would say, well, trick or treat, which one do you want? Let me guess, did their parents lead them around with a candle and a carved out turnip? I wonder what the exchange rate would have been for Snickers bars to iron ingots in 100 CE. I mean, do you want to give us a treat to placate or appease these false gods, these demons, so they don't attack you? Or do you want us to just leave? And, and let you be tricked and let them so it, it was all about the priest coming and getting something what is the trick the trick is an idle threat it's almost like they're threatening you hey you give me a treat or else I'm gonna trick you gee uh, it'd be a shame if uh, something were to uh, happen to your thatch hut uh, tell you what give us a warm soul cake and uh, we might just uh, forget your hut ever existed Capiche? So it's trick or treat. What is the treat? Usually it was in the form of candy or, or money. To, well, today, candy or money. Today, all we think about is going door to door and getting candy. And, and the kids love the candy. And that's what this holiday is to them, is going door to door, dressing up like a ghoul, and getting candy. Ooh, there's that childlike smile again. And there it goes. Without even thinking that this all goes back to the pagan practices that these pagans did. What is this? Well, since you asked, the druids did not invent trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treating may have come from souling. In Britain, the alms took the form not of cash for candles, but cake. Bands of solers went from house to house singing ancient souling rhymes. And small loaves, quick breads, or cakes were handed out to them to be eaten hot while saying a prayer for the departed. Even after the Reformation, when prayers were officially no longer thought necessary to ease the passage of souls to heaven, the idea that the giving and receiving of food by the living somehow benefited or pleased the dead persisted, or souling continued continued, although the souling rhymes became straight begging songs. An old soul-caking play, in fact a mummer's play, survives in Cheshire. The songs have lasted too, but with little meaning now because the soul cakes once baked in great batches, as described by John Aubrey, are no longer made. At least I have not been able to trace an old or original recipe still being used. The soul survivor seems to be the traditional parkin now eaten at Halloween, which is still sometimes called har cake or soul mass cake. The earliest record of souling. The medieval preacher John Merck mentions the tradition of souling as old as a sermon from around 1380. Wherefore, in olden time, good men and women would this day by bread and deal give it for the souls that they love, hoping with each loaf to get a soul out of purgatory. I think it's interesting that in Spanish, trick or treat is me da mi cavalerita, which means, can you give me my little sugar skull? What on earth? Who teaches their children to go to your door and ask for a skull? I mean, it's all pagan. It's all, it's just disgusting. All about dead bodies and bones and gross, horrible stuff. How can a Christian enjoy that? I'm not that familiar with the Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos celebrations, but I am guessing that is why they ask for sugar skulls. But please, continue to strawman druid practices and conflate all Hallows Eve with Samhain. What, what does it say here? Well, let me show you. Trick or treat. What is trick or treat? Trick or treat is basically saying, if you don't give me, I'm going to do this to you. It's extortion. It's, hey, give me something or else I'm going to do this. That's extortion. That's the trick threat. Well, the trick or treat. No treat? Trick. It's a threat. How far can you take these tricks? It was any other night, sir. Trick or treat, bang, bang. But it's trick or treat. It's Halloween. We cut the kids a little slack on Halloween. Yeah. There's kind of a social contract that you enter when you open that door. They say a trick or treat. I would advise you give the treat. There's another thing that's practiced on Halloween today, and that is jack-o'-lanterns. I won't have one of those things for anything in the world. And yet you see those everywhere. What is a jack-o'-lantern? Well, the druids would carry around what they had in their hand, which were actually turnips. They would use big turnips instead of, instead of uh, these pumpkins. But they would take turnips and fill them with candles after they hollowed them out and would carry them around as la lanterns. And they carried these um, hollowed out turnips with candles inside as they went house to house, believing that spirits inhabited the inside of these lighted turnips. And they would help them carry out spells. So they're carrying them around going house to house and saying, look, you know, I got a demon in here. I'll just let him go in your house if you don't, uh, you know, pay up. Basically, extortion. Hey, fear. That's what it's all about, fear. And so what did they do? Well, they called the spirit within that a jock, 
which later was changed into Jack. Which, by the way, Jack is a slang term for Satan. If you didn't know that, you should. Black Jack, Black Satan, Jack, Jock, Satan. So a jack-o'-lantern is a lantern of the devil, basically. Jack-o'-lantern is a little thing with a demon in it, <laughs> is where it comes from. The devil has many nicknames. Black Jack could be one of them. I am convinced you have no concept of time. Jack-o'-lanterns were carved from turnips and beets, but this was in the late 18th and early 19th century. Later, when Scottish and Irish immigrants came to America, they found pumpkins to be more suitable, and thus the modern Jack-o'-lanterns were established. And the tale of Stingy Jack is where we get the name Jack of the Lantern, or Jack O Lantern. I'm not going to tell the whole tale as this video is already getting pretty long, but basically Jack tricks the devil and later when he dies he cannot enter heaven nor hell. And so he wanders the spirit world carrying a lit piece of coal inside a carved out turnip. I remember as a child I was never allowed to go trick or treating. And I didn't know why. I'd, I'd ask my parents, I said that's just an evil pagan holiday and we don't do that. I said okay. And I'm looking back now and I thank God that I never got to go trick-or-treating. Because it's a pagan evil thing. I thank God for Christian parents that kept me from that. So I would not be partaking of the customs of satanic pagans. I'm sorry your parents were so abusive and did not let you enjoy your childhood, but that is no excuse to misrepresent Halloween, the Druids, and Samhain. But it does explain your anger towards this holy day. But what we see is what's called the Christianization of Halloween. These Druids lived before the time of Christ, but around the first century, the Roman Empire conquered most of these Celtic lands. And when they did, the Roman rule came in. And Rome, which was pagan at the time, joined their pagan festival practices with those of the cult, uh, the Celts. Celts, cults, almost sounds the same. And this brought in this time period of, of the Romans kind of took their Halloween of the Druids and mixed it together with their own pagan harvest festival of Pomona, the goddess of fruit trees. Some say that this is where apple bobbing comes from, and it actually came from when the Romans mixed together. Um, other sources said, no, they apple bobbed before. I don't know. And so the great apple bobbing debate continues. Historians think they have it firmly grasped between their teeth, and yet it slips away, eluding their desires. And when the Roman Catholic Church took over, they often incorporated modified versions of the older pa pagan practices. But there has always existed the true church, which has always followed the Apostle Paul. And at the same time, this false pagan mixed church, Catholicism, has existed. And what it does is it takes all the Christianity that's from the true Christianity, and it takes all the paganism, and it says, well, let's just join them together. So the best of both worlds, sign me up. What a fantastic compromise we came to. And then, so what Catholicism did, it would go into a country and it'd say, oh, look at this, they've got, they've got gods. They've got Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. Yeah, I don't think the ancient Druids would have been familiar with Nimrod, Semiramis, or Tammuz. That's a few thousand years before their time and about 2,300 miles east of England. Well, let's just use the same idols that they have, but let's just change the name. Nimrod, you're now, you're now Joseph. Uh, Tammuz, you're Jesus. And, uh... The woman, Semiramis? Well, that's just Mary. And that's why the Catholic Church worships idols. Holy crap, you are fucking insane. Folk practices continued on after Christianity became the official religion of Rome, probably due to their popularity, and the customs continued but under the new Roman Christians. And no, Jesus, Joseph, and Mary are not gods of the Canaanites. Because every country had an idol of a woman with a child. So when they went in, they just said, well, you worshipped that before, well, now you can worship it. Just call him Jesus and call her Mary. I was not aware that every country had an idol of a woman holding a baby. I thought that was only predominantly Catholic countries. Wow, I learned something new every day. Unfortunately, not everything is always correct. Pope Gregory the Fourth in 835, replaced Samhain, remember Samhain, with All Saints Day. So he said, from now on, November 1st, will be called All Saints Day. Now, why would you do that? 
Why would you take a holy day that's set apart for Satan and then say, now from now on, it's just, it's okay, we won't worship Satan, we'll just worship this instead? Many scholars believe that Pope Gregory moved All Saints Day from May 13th to November 1st to compete and supplant the Salon celebrations. We don't know exactly why he moved it. However, in Roman Catholicism, All Saints Day is a holy day. And no matter how big of a straw man you build, neither Samhain or Halloween is a satanic holiday. Now, in 998 AD, in a Catholic French monastery, they set up what they call All Souls Day. And so October 31st became All Souls Day. Are you, are you insane? Now, what is All Saints Day and what is All Souls Day? They're within a day apart from each other. And both of them are days in which you remember the, the dead. So see what the Catholic Church did? They joined with paganism. And they said, oh, there's this pagan festival where they worship the dead. Well, we worship the dead. We worship saints. So let's just change the name. It's no longer, you know, uh, the day of November 1st, or the day to Baal. Uh, we'll just call it All Saints Day. And oh, the 31st, that's not a, a, a Hallow's Eve. We'll just call it All Souls Day. We'll just change the name, but we'll still worship the dead. All Saints Day came first, and then All Souls Day came next. And I doubt Catholics in the 10th century worshipped the dead. They may have remembered them, or prayed for them to enter heaven, if they were believed to be in purgatory, or simply prayed for or to them. You're supposed to completely forget the wickedness, wicked, w w w wicked, of the ungodly pagans. You can just hear the hatred and vitriol oozing out of this man as he voices his diatribe against pagans and Catholics. Wow, his parents really messed him up. I'm a Christian, and I don't like it, and I don't celebrate that with you. As a matter of fact, I look at that as a day of witches, and I say, <laughs> no thanks, I have nothing to do with Halloween. I'm going to quote a, a verse from you, uh, for you. This is a kind of a scary quote. I don't like to quote the Satanic Bible. But page 96 of the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey, Anton LaVey says these words. Now, Anton LaVey took over the Church of Satan. Anton LaVey founded the Church of Satan. And he was a Satanist. He wrote the Satanic Bible. And these are his words on page 96. After one's own birthday, the two major Satanic holidays are Walpurgisnacht, whatever that is, May the 1st. Walpurgisnacht. I'll post a link below to an excellent article on this often misunderstood and little-known Saints Day. And Halloween, or All Hallows we Eve. So, so this Satanist says that the two greatest holidays in the Satanic Church are some other one on May 1st, whatever that is, and Halloween. Halloween is a Satanic Pagan, demonic holiday. Anton LaVey did not start Walpurgisnacht, nor Halloween or Samhain. He founded the Church of Satan and was an atheist. He did not believe in God or the devil. Satanists love Halloween. It's one of their most sacred days. Matter of fact, if you've known any Satanists, and I have known some before, and I've watched videos, and I've heard testimonies of people that were Satanists, it's very sad what they do, but many people that are Satanists will actually engage in human sacrifice. All of the ex-Satanists in Christian circles who claim human sacrifice are frauds and liars. I sure hope you called the police or that they turned themselves in for murder. If you know about an actual murder and you do nothing about it, you are now an accessory to that crime. How can you live with this weighing on your conscience, knowing you did nothing to help the victim and their families? During that day. A lot of children that go missing, they never find. If they ever do find them, often they find them buried in the woods. And they were sacrificed on October 31st by a Satanist in order to get a demon to do something for them. It's a very awful, very wicked, wicked, w w w wicked, very satanic and very evil holiday. Again, if you have knowledge of a kidnapping 
or a murder, contact the proper authorities. Making such an outrageous claim on YouTube is irresponsible. Any absolute fucking idiot who believes that somehow shedding another's blood either gives them power or grants them favor deserves to be locked up and undergo psychiatric evaluation. This is a horrible and very destructive trope associated with witches, pagans, and Satanists. Well, some people, they say, Brother Breaker, I live in a neighborhood where they do trick-or-treating, and, you know, I don't know what to do, and they come to the door. Well, the old saying is, if the light at the porch is off, then you don't go to that door. If it's on, then they can come, so leave the light off. But then again, what's the light? The light is a type of Christ. Christ is the light. The gospel is the light. So, the devil's winning. He's telling people, turn off the light. Yeah, turn off the gospel on his holy day. So here's what I would do. Uh, thankfully, we don't live in an area where we have people come into the door on Halloween. But if you do, and you live in a neighborhood where they knock on the door, turn your light on, and then give them a gospel track. That's a good way to get your house egged, but at least you'll never have to worry about trick-or-treaters coming to your house ever again. Yeah. Why, why would they do something like that? Because I didn't give them candy, that's right. why. But what's sad to me is that the devil has deceived these people into thinking that they need a blood sacrifice to appease his wrath. And what's worse is that these people will sacrifice a human being to their God, their false God, Lucifer. We have a great God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. He was our sacrifice for our sins. The thing that is better than anything in this world is the blood of Christ. The only thing that can defeat, defeat the devil is the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's all about that blood for salvation. If some psychopath commits murder, then they need to be removed from society and placed in jail for the rest of their life. I really don't care why you would commit such a heinous crime. Obviously, taking self-defense or defense of another into consideration. There will be witches, there will be uh, warlocks, there will be evil people out on Halloween that will probably even go out in the woods somewhere and try to sacrifice a child, just like these people did. I've heard stories of that. People getting together and kidnapping babies and going and sacrificing them on Halloween. They, they want that blood to appease the wrath of their false god and to get a demon or a devil to do their bidding. What is the Christian obsession with baby killing? There are indeed many psychopaths and murderers in jail who profess to be Christian. How do you explain that, Robert? That's what I got for you today on the truth about Halloween. I hope it's been a blessing set apart from the devil and his paganism and his evil. Well, this was a pretty standard diatribe against pagans, witches, and Satanists. All the tropes were in there. The Halloween celebration that we are familiar with has been evolving for thousands of years. Folk practices have been included, and many traditions have persevered, and some have been discarded or fallen out of favor. There is no reason that Christians and pagans cannot celebrate this holiday as it has blended several cultures and beliefs together. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I wish all of you a wonderful Halloween. And for those of us who observe Samhain, I hope you have a blessed Samhain. Until next time, I will see you in hell, you heathens. Oh.